Colorectal cancer, or CRC, is a malignancy that arises in the large intestines, which includes both the colon and the rectum. It's the most common cancer of the gastrointestinal tract, and a major cause of death and disease around the world. Most colorectal tumors develop due to sporadic mutations, but some are caused by inherited conditions like familial adenomatous polyposis and Lynch syndrome. Individuals at high risk for CRC include those with inflammatory bowel disease, especially ulcerative colitis, hereditary colorectal cancer syndromes, such as familial adenomatous polyposis, and those with a family history of colorectal cancer or adenomatous polyps. Individuals at medium risk for CRC include the elderly and those that smoke, drink alcohol, eat red meat, and are obese. Finally, well-established protective factors include a high-fiber diet full of fruits and vegetables. Sometimes, especially early on, colorectal cancer is asymptomatic, and it's discovered by screening using either stool-based tests or direct visualization. One stool-based test is the Guaiac-based Fecal Occult Blood Test, or GFOBT, which detects blood in the stool. Another test is the Fecal Immunochemical Test, or FIT. This time, instead of guaiac, there's an antibody that attaches to any hemoglobin that's present in the stool. Finally, there's the FIT DNA test, which combines FIT with a test that detects genes associated with colorectal cancer in the stool, such as mutations in the adenomatous polyposis coli gene, or APC gene. One direct visualization test is a colonoscopy, which is when a camera is inserted retrograde into the colon and rectum using a flexible tube and biopsies are taken. Another one is a flexible sigmoidoscopy, which uses a flexible tube to visualize the rectum and sigmoid colon. Finally, there's CT colonography, or a virtual colonoscopy, which is where CT scans are digitally assembled to produce three-dimensional views of the colon. If a suspicious lesion is seen on a direct visualization test, it should be further investigated using colonoscopy and biopsy. A common example of a suspicious lesion is a colorectal polyp, which is a small bump or overgrowth of tissue along the lining of the colon or rectum. The most common polyps are adenomatous polyps, also called colonic adenomas. Adenomatous polyps can either be pedunculated, meaning that they're attached to the colon wall by a stalk and therefore able to freely swing around, or sessile, which means that they're firmly attached to the colon wall. Sessile adenomatous polyps are more likely to become malignant, so they need to be closely observed. If a polyp is found during a colonoscopy or during a flexible sigmoidoscopy, then a biopsy should also be done to rule out or confirm cancer. On histology, polyps can be tubular, where the growth has little holes within it on a cross-section, or villus, where it looks like a little tree, or tubulovillus, where it's a mix between the two. Among these, villus polyps are the most likely to be malignant. Now, if an adenomatous polyp can't be entirely removed using the colonoscopy, then surgical resection may be needed, especially if it's a polyp that has a high risk for malignancy, like a sessile polyp. Another type of polyp is an inflammatory polyp, and these typically develop after a flare of ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, and they usually don't become malignant and don't require excision. A final group are hamartomatous polyps, which are normally made up of a mixture of tissues and have a distorted architecture. Hamartomatous polyps are often associated with genetic syndromes, like juvenile polyposis and pitz jager syndrome. How we screen for CRC depends on risk and which method is used. For medium-risk individuals, one option is to do annual screening starting at age 50 with GFOBT or FIT. If FIT DNA is used, screening can be done every one to three years. CT colonography or flexible sigmoidoscopy should be done every five years, while colonoscopy 
which is the best screening test, should be done every 10 years. With high-risk individuals, screening starts earlier than usual. If an individual has a family history of sporadic CRC, then screening should start at age 40 with a colonoscopy, and it should be repeated every five years. Alternatively, a FIT test can be done annually. Individuals with inflammatory bowel disease should get a colonoscopy every year. Typically, screening stops between age 75 and 85, depending on the individual's overall health. Now, these guidelines are a bit different for hereditary colorectal syndromes. Lynch syndrome, which is also called hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer, or HNPCC, is the most common cause of inherited CRC. It should be suspected in individuals that develop CRC before age 50, or develop other cancers typically seen in Lynch syndrome, like endometrial, ovarian, small bowel, stomach, and renal cancer. Lynch syndrome is caused by a mutation in a DNA mismatch repair gene, or the EPCAM gene. For a definitive diagnosis, the mutations need to be confirmed using genetic testing. Normally, screening for individuals with Lynch syndrome begins at age 20 or 25 every one or two years using colonoscopy. And females with Lynch syndrome should also get a pelvic examination annually to look for signs of endometrial or ovarian cancer. Familial adenomatous polyposis, or FAP, is an autosomal dominant genetic disease caused by mutations in the adenomatous polyposis coli gene, or APC gene. There's a classic form of FAP that is characterized by more than 100 colorectal polyps, and an attenuated form of FAP that has fewer than 100 colorectal polyps. FAP can also cause extracolonic symptoms, such as polyps in the stomach and duodenum, desmoid tumors, which are connective tissue tumors, and these are usually localized in the abdomen, and sometimes individuals can present a nodular thyroid that in some cases may develop into thyroid cancer. There are also some variants of FAP, like Gardner syndrome, which causes multiple colorectal polyps as well as osteomas, which are bony growths that develop in the mandible, and soft tissue tumors like epidermoid cysts, fibromas, and desmoid tumors. Another one is Turcot syndrome, which consists of multiple colorectal polyps and brain tumors like medulloblastomas and gliomas. Turcot syndrome can also be associated with Lynch syndrome. Now, the diagnosis of FAP should be suspected in any individual with more than 10 colorectal adenomas, a history of colorectal adenomas with extracolonic manifestations, or with a family history of FAP. In these situations, genetic testing is done to look for an APC gene mutation. Screening for individuals with classic FAP begins around age 10 with an annual flexible sigmoidoscopy or colonoscopy. With classic FAP, the risk for eventually developing CRC is about 100%, and since not every polyp can be removed endoscopically, a colectomy is typically recommended. For individuals with attenuated FAP, CRC typically develops later in life, so screening begins at age 25 and is done every one to two years using colonoscopy. Now, in addition to identifying CRC through screening, it may also get diagnosed in individuals that develop symptoms like abdominal pain, unintentional weight loss, and a change in bowel habits, specifically diarrhea alternating with constipation. Left-sided CRC is associated with pencil-shaped stools, and rectosigmoid cancer is associated with hematochesia and tenesmus. CRC can also cause complications like peritonitis or intestinal obstruction. On the physical examination, sometimes an abdominal or rectal mass can be felt. A classic sign of metastasis is periumbilical adenitis, and in terms of organs, metastasis usually goes to the liver, followed by the lungs and the bones. The workup for CRC includes a CBC, which can show anemia due to iron deficiency from blood loss, an ALT and AST, which may be elevated if there is liver metastasis, 
and a BUN in creatinine to assess renal function because a large tumor can compress the ureters and cause renal impairment. The tumor marker carcinoembryonic antigen, or CEA, is often elevated in CRC. A barium enema can be useful as well. That's where a liquid is injected into the rectum through a small tube, and an X-ray is taken to look for abnormalities in the large intestines. Classically, colorectal cancer will show an apple core sign, which shows constriction of the lumen, most often in the descending colon. A colonoscopy with biopsy is the gold standard for diagnosing CRC. Most commonly, the mass is exophytic, or polypoid, meaning that the tumor grows into the lumen. But it can also be endophytic, or ulcerative, meaning that the tumor destroys healthy tissue and creates an erosion into the intestinal wall. Finally, some tumors are considered diffuse and infiltrative, which is where they grow within the intestinal wall, causing it to become thick and rigid. All of these tumor types can be friable and necrotic, and can bleed easily. On histology, most CRCs are adenocarcinomas, meaning that they arise from the cells lining the intestinal glands. Once the diagnosis of a CRC is confirmed, the next step is to obtain a CT scan of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis to see if there's lymph node involvement or if there are any metastases. Sometimes, an MRI of the liver is specifically done to look for lesions. CRC is staged accordingly to the tumor node metastasis, or TNM, system into five stages. Stage zero is carcinoma in situ, meaning that the tumor has not grown beyond the mucosa. Stage one is when the tumor has grown beyond the mucosa, but has not spread to lymph nodes or distant organs, and this usually includes cancers that were part of a polyp. Stage two is when the tumor has invaded the whole colonic or rectal wall and may have reached nearby organs or tissues, but still hasn't spread to lymph nodes or distant organs. Stage three is when the tumor has spread to lymph nodes, but still hasn't spread to distant organs. Finally, stage four is metastatic, meaning that the tumor has spread to distant organs. Treatment for colorectal carcinoma depends on the stage of the cancer. For stage zero and one, surgical resection of the tumor is usually curative. For stage two, a partial colectomy may be needed, along with removing the nearby lymph nodes. Adjuvant chemotherapy, meaning chemotherapy after surgery, is recommended when the cancer has a high risk of recurrence. An example of this is when the CRC obstructs or causes a perforation in the colon, or CRC that develops near large blood vessels. For CRC stage 3, a partial colectomy and surgical removal of the nearby lymph nodes is recommended, along with adjuvant chemotherapy. Chemotherapy typically includes the Falfox regimen, which consists of folinic acid, or leucoverin, 5-fluorouracil, and oxaliplatin, or Falfiri regimen, that consists of folinic acid, or leucoverin, 5-fluorouracil, and ironotecan. One additional regimen is called Capox, and it's formed by capocytobine and oxaliplatin. In individuals that are severely ill and cannot undergo surgery, Radiation therapy with or without chemotherapy may be an option. For CRC stage 4, neoadjuvant chemotherapy may be done to shrink the tumors before surgically resecting the CRC along with any metastasis in the liver or in the lung. If the CRC blocks the colon, then a diverting colostomy, which is when the colon is cut above the location of the CRC and attached to an opening in the skin to allow waste to go out, or even a colectomy, which is a total removal of the colon, may be needed. Now, if CRC has spread widely and surgical resection is no longer an option, then chemotherapy is the main treatment. All right, as a quick recap. In colorectal cancer for medium risk individuals, screening starts at age 50, and it can be done using GFOBT or FIT annually, FIT DNA every one to three years, flexible sigmoidoscopy or CT colonography every five years, or 
colonoscopy every 10 years. For high-risk individuals, if there's a family history of sporadic CRC, then screening should start at age 40 using colonoscopy every 5 years. If there's inflammatory bowel disease, then a colonoscopy with biopsy should be done every year. If Lynch syndrome is suspected, genetic testing for the MMR or EPCAM genes should be done. And screening here begins at age 20 and is done every 1 to 2 years using colonoscopy. If FAP is suspected, genetic testing for the APC gene should be done, and screening begins at age 10 and is performed annually using colonoscopy. In individuals with symptoms of CRC, the workup includes lab work and a barium enema, which may show the apple core sign. The gold standard for diagnosis is a colonoscopy with biopsy, and typically the CRC is an adenocarcinoma. After the diagnosis is confirmed, staging is done using a CT scan. Based on the TNM system, CRC has five stages. For CRC stage 0 and 1, a surgical resection of the tumor is usually curative. For CRC stage 2, a partial colectomy may be needed, along with adjuvant chemotherapy. For stage 3, surgical resection including the nearby lymph nodes and adjuvant chemotherapy is recommended. For stage 4, a surgical resection may be done to remove the tumor and metastasis in the liver or lung, but if surgery is not an option, then chemotherapy is the main treatment. If complications appear, then a colectomy or a diverting colostomy may be needed. Finally, chemotherapy regimens include Falfox, Falfiri, or Capox.